Hello everyone, this is Philip from the Community Hub with a middle of the day update on Tuesday, June 10th, I believe it is. Um, a little bit in the afternoon. Um, we were here late last night. July, July, yeah, sorry. Yeah. In July, where is... I know, these days are going by fast. Yeah, July 10th, Monday, Monday, Tuesday, July 10th. Yeah, it's hard to keep track. There is a community meeting later tonight at the Pahoa uh, Cafeteria. We'll check that out later and report to you guys what we learned from over there. But for now, we have some um, some photographs that have come in from um, USGS and from Ikaika that kind of give us some idea of what's developed over in the area of Kapaho Crater since last night. Um, so yeah, hi everybody. So I'm going to go do the first pass, pass through here and then we'll repeat it as usual. So we have a new USGS map. Let me put on, let me... Sorry guys, I'm not quite as ready as I thought I was. Let me get the iPad set up so I can get it. No glare here. All right, guys. So here's the, the latest map from USGS, uh, updated at 12 p.m. today. That's uh, three hours ago from our broadcast right now. And kind of a quick scan of it shows uh, the area of new red of the flows that changed since their map yesterday. Uh, a little bit of movement of the flow down by Ahala Nui. It's moving closer to Ahala Nui, slowly but surely, unfortunately. Not very fast yet, but we'll have to see how things change. The overflow, just one second. Overflow by Kapoa Crater. There was an overflow that happened in the area right in here on the west side of the crater that's filled in some of the area. Um, but the photograph that we have turns out was actually almost like a like a burst of the dam that kind of flooded this area And then this particular flow stopped shortly afterwards There's a flow flowing on top of the new ground or the, the more recent spillover the pink area over here that we'll show you guys a photograph of as well and Up here. This is the area we were concerned about yesterday this overflow to the north that was heading towards Cinder Road and Papaya Farms Road up here fortunately this thing didn't pick up speed and most of the flow so when this started spilling over the flow front was in here, and by the time it reached this higher point, it spilled over to the south. So there was a period of time when most of the lava was actually starting to go that direction, and unfortunately it diverted all to the south afterwards. So let me show you guys a series of photographs here. I'll turn it to, to uh, show Ken. Oh, by the way, we got Ken Boyer here with us. Hub. So we'll ask Ken some questions shortly, but uh, let me show you guys the photographs I got lined up for you. Let me just pull them up. And let's start with... That one on a sequence is the first one on a sequence from about 2.30 yesterday. And what you can see is the channel is all the way drained right here. All this is probably gooey, still hot lava, but it's uh, not the gas-rich stuff that really flows really well. The floor, floor itself is actually right in here. Whoops. I'm going to try to use this. Right in there, that edge of it right in there. It's coming back through the channel. The spillover to the cinder road area is over here. And let me go to the next... The next image to show you guys of how it developed next is this one. Okay, so the flow came forward, hit a blockage by the corner up here, and this is the flash flood, like dam burst I'm talking about, that kind of flooded the area right west of Kapoko Crater. And by now, this area is actually all, believe it or not, cooled. Cooled to solid, not cooled to cold, obviously. There's another flow here in the background that is still active right now that's looks kind of like a spillover of this upper pond area and you can see in this photograph it's reached not quite as far as this little spur down here so we'll look at that in our next next photo here and some of some of the lava that you know most lava is getting hitting some barrier right over here and dumping across but some of it's actually leaking through and squeezing through into the old channel right through here you guys can see that right there's a little bit of lava trying to move through here re-establishing that pathway so the last photograph we have in this sequence is on the USGS website today. Those last two were by Scott Wilson of Aloha Skies Aviation, by the way. Um, so thanks again, Scott, for sharing all that with us. By the photograph this morning, the USGS flyover, you guys can see that this big flash flood area over here is actually all black now, all that, believe it or not. And if you look closely, there is still some part of that house of the green roof is actually still there. Um, you can see that the flow farther over to the west is actually still active. It's got a bigger front on it, but it's actually still not as far as that spur. It actually hasn't moved forward very much at all. Even though it seems to be quite open and red during this photograph, we believe it's probably going to advance a little bit from when this was taken to, to, to right now. 
So that's the sequence right around uh, Capoa Crater. And notice here where it's actually pushed through the old, the old channel. It's made a nice, nice little tube here where that blockage occurred actually. So, you know, that's likely to be another kind of um, damming point, like a point where it's gonna dam and get blocked again and again, because now this thing is only getting narrower and narrower, right? But some is, is leaking through here and has reestablished the channel more so than the previous photograph, right? So you guys can see here. Now this is the flow that a couple of days ago was headed towards uh, Halanui. It's the one that's kind of still creeping today. And we're not sure what the connection is between here and a flow front that's further down by the ocean over there. That's something we'll have to wait and get more photographs and see over the day how that develops. But essentially the flow is being split between that branch over there, a little bit of this branch over here. And because of that kind of constriction, um, that's probably likely why this pond up here is still overflowing and able to kind of spill over the sides. So even though those big overflows uh, around uh, Cinder Road seem to have actually, um, people were saying they've actually stalled, it's still quite possible the overflows are putting lava into them, into the shell that they could be inflating. They still have the potential to move, so everyone is still at to watch out and be very alert in that area to make sure that there's not any surge, any kind of renewed activity of that now established outflow of the channel towards the area that people are now um, hopefully aware of the, of the threat right there. So um, that's uh, kind of the, the, the relevant stuff for around the Capoa Crater area. We have another photograph that uh, Ikaika sent us this morning of Fisher 8. Uh, and what hopefully you can see is that it's still putting out a huge amount of lava. It doesn't seem changed at all from any previous time. Um, you can see that this pond maybe is not quite overflowing, but um, there's a little red spot over over here actually. So I mean there are there have been some overflows kind of in a steaming area all through here. And it seems likely that as we have a lot of stuff clogging the channel, but we're likely to have more spillovers um, in the coming days. Hopefully they'll be small ones and um, won't pose much threat to people. But we have to be aware that, that it seems like conditions are actually better now than before for these blockages to happen. So that's a, like a, a, a quick version of what I had to, to share with you guys. Um, we have Ken today, and Ken was actually uh, in uh, Leilani this morning and has a report for us on um, what might actually have, what he actually saw on the ground. So maybe I'd like to share that with us, Ken. Hey everybody. Okay, so what I, what I observed while I was in there today is um, when we first arrived around 9 a.m., the, uh, the lava wasn't flowing um, as high or as rapidly as, uh, some other times. Um, went in there, we um, assessed the property uh, on Nohea and saw that there was, we can actually go back to this map here real quick. Which one would and you like? This one's perfect, right? I'm sorry, this picture right here. So you can see where the spillovers are happening, got some um, where, where the go. steam is. And there is some new flow front that's happening in these areas. The area we were at, we were able to see some landmarks that were taken that weren't previously taken was um, somewhere right around, I can't see it very well, but in this area. Um, <clears throat> and so that's, that area definitely is having um, some new lava flowing out. And that happened, I think, sometime yesterday. It's cooled off, it's not advancing or anything like that. Um, as we were leaving, the volume had increased, uh, I would say kind of dramatically. So it was uh, coming out a lot faster. Um, there was some, small explosions actually we noticed in the, in the channel too which was kind of interesting and uh, you can actually see the uh, rocks kind of uh, exploding out of the channel um, and that was right outside of fishery um, other than that that was pretty much uh, what we observed in there today um, still seems like everything's well contained at this time nothing's coming out but we definitely want to keep an eye on it since it definitely had uh, some movement sometime yesterday right on and so just to kind of recap, you were you able to see the channel walls when you were first arrived this morning from your perspective? Like you, you know, see, the levels you were see down. The back side of the wall, so you can tell the red, you know, where the red lava is going is is lower. Uh -huh. And as we're leaving, you couldn't see the back wall anymore. So right. You see the you could more see the, the turn of the lava as it comes out of Fisher. Right. And how many hours apart was that? Uh, about two and a half. So about I think two and a half uh, hours we went apart. in around nine and left around eleven thirty. So there's a big difference in those two and a half hours. Right, okay, interesting. Lots of those uh, lavanados out there too today. That was pretty cool to see. Right, Lots nice. Looks like we're having trouble with my microphone. I'm not sure why. Uh -oh. Some people are saying they can't hear. I'm not sure what is up with that. Sometimes it happens, you guys, so uh, sorry about that. Um, 
sometimes when I face it this way, it works a little better. I don't know so, why. It might be my, yeah. <laughs> my way my phone works or something. But, Hello uh, again. <laughs> but yeah, so basically, uh, Ken was just talking about how there's fluctuations over the two and a half hours that he was there witnessing the channel near Fisher 8 this morning, right? Yeah, so there was definitely a fluctuation in the uh, output coming out of Fisher 8 from the time we got there at 9.30. Uh, was it was definitely down you can see the back wall really easily uh, by the time we left around 11 30 uh, you couldn't see the back wall anymore you could see just the rolling lava coming through so there was definitely a, a big difference there right on uh, thanks again yeah well, thank you yeah and so yeah we're thankful for all the reports everyone can can pass us uh, that's uh who are checking out their houses or what have you so um yeah, that's our, 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 our quick update. Um, so the thing that everyone is wanting to know about um, is uh, Cinder Road area, Papaya Farms Road, like which you know kind of um, is a lot better outlook today than yesterday. The threat is still there. Um, it's not imminent right now. So uh, stay on alert there, but you don't have to kind of run for it like I was, you know, like like I was scared last night. You know, if that big flow that had gone to the south had instead burst to the north we would have had people really running for it. Yeah. Um, so that's, that was, you know, the, the motivation for that. Thanks for keeping everybody up to date on that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And you know, uh, I never wanted to be alarmist or anything. And like I said, I'm, you know, uh, my best yeah, situation is that like people act quickly, you know, I, my, my mindset is if you guys have time to get one more load out of there and there like one more load of valuables that you may never, never be able to replace, then that's yeah. worth it. You know I mean? But as long um, as people are aware, that's the main thing, right? Staying aware of, of what's going on. Yeah, and it's important, and thanks for bringing that out. And uh, you know, I, I saw Philip doing his live. I had the information. I went live so that we could get it out to as many people as we could, and hopefully somebody else, um, you know, that hadn't heard already, may have gotten out, you know, or was able to get more things out because they had a little more advanced uh, warning. So that's what it's all about. It's not about, you know, worrying anybody or anything like that. It's just getting the word out to make sure people are aware of what's what's happening and what could happen. Yeah, well said. Well said. So, yeah, um, turned out to be just a drill essentially, right? But you know, the more practice, probably the better. And um, there you go. And yeah, we hope that they're all drills, really. And that there's never any real one that you have to move out. Of course, 700 houses already, right? More or less, you know. Um, so we've gotten past that for a lot, a lot of people. But those of you who are still like on the edge, you know, we're worried about you guys next, basically. Yeah. So. Um, the ne next thing everyone wants to know about is the school. Um, I don't know very much about the school, but there is a photograph that was uh, posted by Kaika today. Um, I'm gonna take glare. I want to glare him like this. Here's a photograph of that. So um, let me point out the area right in here is the warm pond and the school complex and surf spot. And as of this photograph, you can see the flow is kind of the active ocean entry is farther over, over here on the backside, but the actual active flow's edge is close to this eastern bay right in here. And that definitely corresponds to what we see of the, of the map that was just uh, published. Let me go back to it and show you guys on the map how that actually looks. So, back down here, and there we have, let's zoom it in, there we have that second bay. And right here is that flow right on the edge of it with the main ocean entry more over here on the back side. All right, so as it is now, the flow is still a similar distance. Um, let's say that if it was yesterday, if we assume that this pink line was yesterday and a USGS re report was 500 meters yesterday coming this way, then it might be in a range of 400 meters today, something like that, All right? Maybe even a little more than that. <laughs> so it's just an estimate based on the map and you know, the reports. Um, so it is a bit closer. You know, and the fact that the big river of lava is still there is of, of concern for sure. But the fact that the lava in the channel above got diverted, um, the channel drained, and now it's refilling the channel means that kind of all bets are off. Because if you guys will remember to a few days ago, that's when we had the first diversion up by that, <clears throat> how many days ago? Or was July 3rd? So that was about a week ago now. A week ago was when we had the first apartment sized block reported by USGS <clears throat> blocking the channel over by the Green Mountain uh, Capoa Crater area that essentially uh, caused that first overflow to cause the channel to jump around and make an extra extra loop around that dog leg of the, of the cone from when it flows more east and then south around Capo Crater. Um, the 
when that happened, that lower part of the channel drained, lava came back into it, and then chose to establish a channel to the was able to establish a channel to the south. I say chose, right, as if it has a mind of its own. And a lot of us feel that way, but maybe that's a discussion for a different day, mm -hmm. right? You know how, how how lava actually feels like it's got a personality sometimes or a character and even a will of its own, you might hear people around here say. Yeah, but maybe let's leave that for, for a different day. So um, that's our quick update for today. Um, if something else happens, we'll let you guys know. Um, when there are more uh, um, photographs, especially aerial photographs, um, we'll share those with you guys. And and yeah, I think that's that's all the relevant information for now. Yeah, we'll, we'll cut it off here, let you guys watch from the beginning if you guys didn't catch the beginning of, of the presentation here. And I think we'll, you know, you guys are probably stuck with just me giving you updates for at least another day. Um, but soon we'll all be back together and be able to spread, spread around a little more. So once again, just to remind you guys, uh, there is a community meeting tonight in Pahoa. Um, I'll attend and let you guys know what, what else is there. Um, Information-wise, that's new that we can that we can share with you guys and hope you understand maybe what's going on. You know, um, one thing I maybe wanted to mention. You know, we haven't talked much about like the physics of why these spillovers are actually happening. The one thing that we've been discussing, I'm kind of throwing around. You know, I want to give uh, Les Peterson a great deal of credit for you know, brainstorming um, some of this idea. Is that there there are pro probably or possibly um, a lot of uh, um, blocks of lava beneath the surface of the channel. And they may actually be um, clogging the channel in several areas, maybe not all the way, but to the point where some of the areas are actually backing up and spilling over. And then they'll be able to, to push past that, release that pressure, and it almost sends like a surge, almost like a flood going down ahead of it. So then you can actually have overflows happening downstream while the upstream section is draining to the point where the banks are exposed. So we're not sure, you know, at all that there's anything like that happening, but that's kind of a more complicated model of what might be happening that might possibly explain the fluctuations in lava levels, both in the same place over the course of time, but also in different places, having high lava in one area and then low in the other, and then kind of having them, having them um, side by side or, you know, one next to the other and then having that change over, over time. So I'm just kind of throwing it out there, the idea that basically there might be hidden dangers in that channel that we can't see. And that's kind of where I draw this idea that maybe, you know, we have optimal conditions for spillovers. It might just be there are so many boulders in there we can't see that it doesn't take that much change, right, for the things to actually stack up in a way that it blocks the flow and causes a spillover again. So um, the bottom line is, you know, we've got to be extra alert now. We have seen, you know, more spillovers happen in the last week than the whole first month of eruption. So we'd be silly to, to think that that's the end of it and it won't happen again, you know? Um, so we gotta be, we gotta make it very careful when anyone, anyone who's assessing the edge of the flow field, it could be that some of these could actually spill over and start covering new ground as was the, the case yesterday. So thanks you guys for watching. Um, we're gonna sign off here. Can, uh, you know. Aloha guys, stay classy Puna. Yeah, stay classy Puna. Thanks you guys. Aloha. Mm -hmm.